It seems like for years and years, the government and hot rodders haven't been getting along because we're getting new engine technology, uh, but to put it in an old car, sometimes you run into the legality issues of how do you register it? Is it smog legal? Does it have to be tested? You know, and it gets to be a big mess. Uh, but Bill Martin's here with GM Performance Products. You guys have a, a whole solution for this. We've got a great new product line that we introduced at the SEMA show this week. It is a new line of engines, and we call it the E-Rod. It's a sub-brand, if you will, of GM Performance Parts crate engines. But the unique thing about it is it's emissions legal, complete package out of the crate, approved by the uh, CARB, the uh, EPA group in California, and of course, uh, it will pass emissions check at the uh, bar inspection station. Okay, so there are so many dimensions of why this project was difficult. I mean, working with the CARB Air Research Board, uh, EPA, to get it certified, to get it, it's 50 state legal? It is 50 state legal, uh, it, yeah, and you're right, this project has been a year really behind the scenes in the making. I bet. Uh, SEMA has been the big, big driver, if you will, our partner to help and, and be our liaison with CARB. Uh, the basic package is uh, emissions legal to a 2010 new vehicle standard. Mm -hmm. So it is very current. It covers you know new car builds as well as retrofits. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to address uh, a glaring gap, if you will, in the market so that a hot rodder today can actually build a car, uh, register the car, title a car, and be legal. And to be clear, we've known for a long time that it's, it's not so much the emissions output being the challenge, because these motors run clean, a good tune-up will run clean, it's just seeing in, in the government's eyes that it's okay and good for the environment. That's the hard part. That's true. There's there are certain standards. This is not an easy task. Uh, the, the government standards are very stringent, as you know, and getting more more so every day. And so that that the calibration, if you will, the work that we're able to do as a manufacturer mm -hmm. enables to, you know us to be on top of that and meet that future standard. Okay, so tell me about the parts. This is probably a, a whole bunch of stuff it, it, to make it happen. It, it's not as complex as it might first seem. We start out using the Corvette LS3 engine, which is 430 horsepower. Oh, they're awesome. Very, very nice, smooth power, very drivable. But then we also include, with this kit, we include the complete uh, engine control module okay. with the calibration that makes this legal. Okay. We have the harness, we have the exhaust manifolds and catalytic converters and the O2 sensors. So all of those components are all the pieces of the puzzle that combine to make this legal. We also include a vapor canister, which is a new part to most people. Uh, so that is part of the kit as well. So that is, uh, in a nutshell, that is the uh, that is the E-Rod the e package. Well, this is so awesome to me because, you know, 15, 20 years ago, everybody was so afraid of the catalytic converter, the feedback fuel systems, you know, choking power, but on a day-to-day -day basis, GM is showing that uh, a new Corvette makes insane power. It's awesome. And it's just super, super clean, and, and now you're telling me, we're going to put the cats, we're going to join them. Yeah. We're going to put the cats and, and all this new technology on the old car, and you're going to get, you're probably going to get killer fuel economy with it. We expect this car, you know, in, in a mid-3,000 pound car, the, the LS3 as is should deliver in the mid-20s, even high 20s, depending on gear ratio and tires. Yeah. So we, you know, it's really kind of best of both worlds. We've got power and we've got mileage uh, to go with. Okay. And it's clean. And I'm imagining um, you can't deviate from the formula, though, to, to keep that legal certification. That is, that is true. The, uh, the Not that it's a bad formula, the, though. The package is uh, it, to be installed in its entirety. Mm -hmm. So, for example, right now you can't put a header, uh, if you will, an aftermarket stainless header with this package and remain emissions legal. Okay. So, uh, again, that's a, as the law is today. So it's certified as a package. Now, you mentioned um, catalytic converters. Do we have options from the CATS back? From the CATS back, yes. You can do anything from the CAT back. Okay. So the, the critical dimension, and I'm not an engineer to tell you what, what that dimension is, but the CAT must, re, must remain in a certain relationship to the engine. In other words, you can't put the CAT halfway back in the car. Right. Uh, it has to be close to the engine to fire and function properly. But that's why we're using your manifolds. They handle that exactly. Okay. That we we maintain that critical dimension. Now you mentioned the install. Um, is this going to be uh, the set available through GM Performance Parts dealers and and 
Am I correct in, in that I heard that there might be an install program with some of these dealers? Well, that's yet to be determined. We just, uh, I'm not gonna dodge your answer, uh, your question, but we just announced this program this week to our dealers. Okay. So I'm sure our more enterprising dealers are out there thinking right now how they might be a part, a bigger part of this. But our plan, uh, out of the box, we're supplying the, the kit as is. Mm -hmm. We're working with the premier builders, premier hot rod builders around the country mm -hmm. to educate them. But as far as the formal install center, if you will, that's not in our plan right now. Well, I guess where I was going from is it doesn't have to be installed by the dealer to remain. Oh, certified. absolutely this not is for the home. Guy absolutely to not. Yeah. No, in fact, actually, it's geared towards the aftermarket, the builds of new cars, conversions, that type of thing. Um, not that not that our dealers aren't welcome to engage sure, in sure, that, sure. but it's really not geared for that. Right. There's no reason a consumer. That's why we built this 55. We wanted to really show that anybody out here, any enthusiast out here, could easily do this conversion themselves. And when you say easy, I think uh, people that haven't played with this engine platform don't understand that they are pretty simple. I tell you what, I, I put the harness on the uh, project engine. I had never put one on myself. And I put the entire harness on and had it operational in about 15 minutes. You, you can't do it wrong. It really is plug and play. Yeah. And if an old guy like me can do it, <laughs> hey, a young guy, no problem. Well, and there's really no gaskets. Everything's all O-ring. It, it, it's two really, really a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, now, certainly, I don't mean to mean that it, it does require some, you know, some work. Well, uh, yeah. It has to have auxiliary power wired in. You have to plumb a fuel system to it. Uh, but it's very, uh, it's not daunting. It, it's easily done. And we've got a great, great instruction manual to install the complete package. Well, but you don't need a whole fab shop and welders. Oh, absolutely and, and not. Making brackets. Absolutely and not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trans in many cases, the driveline transmission will bolt right up. Uh, cat back exhaust may have to be fabbed a little bit. Mm -hmm. But other than that, there's really not that much to, uh, to worry about. Certainly, you don't need a welder and a, and a torch to, to do it. Now, I'm thinking part of the genius of this for you guys is in an effort to help General Motors um, you know, elevate and continue some more success. Internally, this is really almost taking something that you've already had, this calibration and these parts, and, and finding a new home that, that is you know, acceptable in the marketplace. It wasn't a, probably a, a huge investment beyond getting certified because you guys didn't have to tool up and make all this stuff. Well, that's the advantage. You, you're, you're right in one sense that we use a regular, produc a regular production engine option, RPO engine, mm -hmm. that we basically change the cow, if mm -hmm. you will, for a specific uh, exhaust and, and cat system. Mm -hmm. So we, it, I want to emphasize it is a different cow to be legal. Okay. So that is, to your point, that is the big investment on our part. Right. And uh, it is a big number. It's not. It's not easily done. It's not no. cheaply done. But uh, building custom harness, if you will, to accommodate the O2 sensors and then developing the cow is the biggest work. But it's a great untapped marketplace. Well, yes. Uh, you know, we came to the show with an answer to the question that a lot of guys didn't have. And I think what we've done now is got a lot of people thinking about, wow, you know, I, I'm thinking about a project I haven't, you know, I've talked to many guys this week that were going to do a car, but didn't because of registration and emissions issues. Sure. And now we have a solution for that. Thanks for putting the effort in and doing it. Glad to, glad to. We, we have, uh, this is the first package. We have more to follow. We got three or four more engine families, so, uh, Stay tuned. Uh, if this doesn't fit the bill, I think we'll probably have a couple others that you'll be interested in.